almost parked there all right so i'm trying to like trying to upload a 16 minute video and i had to go through pictures and videos that were already on my phone to try to delete stuff to make more content and i'm not complaining i'm using this as a way for me to explain all that god's gotten me through in the past just two years i've been following christ for five but in the past two it's been the most chaotic and almost seamless transition from east coast to southeast to west coast and there's no other way i could have done it without god and i think that's what i'm trying to get at by saying all this i've felt a call to ministry since I was an altar boy and the bishop from Boston told me if you keep doing what you're doing you're going to be a mighty man of God one day and it probably had something to do with my parents talking down on me throughout my life thinking like okay well why me if you know if my parents don't even see me as this great person then how could God you know but then as time went on, I realized that no, God has way more authority than my parents and my parents are just trying to play God. So the way I look at it now, I can do anything because he tells me I can. And that doesn't mean like jump off a bridge or like do something dumb, you know what I mean? But if I can help somebody, I'm going to. I mean, I've been smoking for half of my life you know from 16 smoking cigarettes and weed and now i don't <laughs> at all and i don't even want it you know so that's just how good he is he completely changes you changes your priorities changes your life changes your mind a total transformation of my heart i just want to say like okay i'm in a place that I've never been. I don't know anybody here. I met a new group of people. I went to a church that I didn't know, and I found people that celebrate me. It's not just them tolerating me. They're celebrating my gifts and who I am, and I think they're aware of who I'm becoming as well. And then soon, it's about to rain super hard and sunset, but yeah, it's usually what it looks like when it's about to rain hard. I was trying to say that I think it's part of my defense mechanism that before I reach a certain level, it's almost like I self-sabotage myself right before I get there. I'm starting to no longer do that and I'm starting to post more and I'm starting to do more and what I really need to do is just sit down with my Bible and read to video you know uh read for youtube that's kind of what i've been called to and it doesn't really have to be a public ministry it can be private before it's public you know a lot of the ministries in the bible were private before they were public and a lot of people got tested in the desert and that's what i came to realize yesterday moses got tested in the desert before Jesus got tested in the desert before. Joseph got tested in the desert. And then he went to Egypt. Prison in Egypt. But prison was Joseph's ministry. Because he told everyone their dreams. And then even Daniel. Daniel got exiled. And then he was telling all the other people. All, like the Nebuchadnezzar his dreams. You know, so he was being a prophet there. Jonah, Jonah was a prophet. He got sent out to a place that he didn't want to go. And at first he didn't go. And then when he finally did go, God showed through. And I went to Florida before I came here, but God showed me come down here five years ago when I was still living in Vermont. But I'm like, there's nothing out there for me over there. Why would I go there? And now I'm starting to see why I should have came here. It's a lot like New Hampshire, the mountains. I mean, besides the heat, it's a lot like New Hampshire. And 
I like it. It reminds me of home. There's also a lot of things happening here that it's making me realize that if I was in Florida doing this as well, it would still be fruitful. So it's not really a test of who I am. I think it was more of a test of my faith. Like, do you trust me that even when you're out there in a place that you don't know, that I'll still provide for you? And when I got here, I've said it before months ago, I didn't find a job right when I got here. So I ended up taking my DoorDash bag and just doing that. And that's what I'm doing now. And it's still enough to sustain me and more. So he continues to provide and make a way. And I'm hopeful that this is going to hit somebody and make you see that even when you're doubting, even when you don't understand what's going on, he still provides, he still makes a way every time. And no matter what you're dealing with also, it's for your good. It's always for your good. It might be something that you're like, oh, why me? But instead of why me, it's what am I about to learn from this? Because you do always learn something from it. It might be something you've been slipping on for years. Like, okay, my problem for a long time was seeking satisfaction in other people. And instead of people pleasing now, I please God. And I'm okay with saying no to people when before I'd overextend myself so much that it would end up hurting me and now I don't want God to be against me or not not against me but I think you know what I mean like I don't want to I don't want to affect this connection that I have with God like this Bible here I'll just show you before I start driving again I gotta go soon but I'll start up again this Bible here I got this Bible in Lebanon, New Hampshire, five, six years ago, in a book box. And this is my first Bible since Catholic school when I was in eighth grade. Okay? And I found this in a book box when I put one of my paintings in the book box. So this was back before I even wanted to go back to God. God came to me. I found this in a book box. It was meant for me. I know it was. Why Why would I put that painting in that book box? That was the only painting I had put in a book box in that area. Same area that if you go down in my videos down here, you'll see me playing piano in a tunnel. Same town. I'd walk around. I'd talk to people. I'd do the same thing that I do now, but it wasn't with God. It was with... I, I don't even know what I believed. I believed that I could do it all on my own and I didn't need God. But the more that I walked with God and then as soon as I opened that, I felt joy and relief. I had just been broken up with and the whole victim mentality went to a victorious mentality. Like I could do anything through Christ and it's true. Like I felt everything that was holding me back just lifted and gone. And I slowly started to change who I was and my depression was gone, my anxiety was gone, I could talk publicly, I could talk to anyone, I'm not afraid of wildlife or whatever, you know, like there's things that happen here and it doesn't faze me. If someone kills me, oh well, I'm going to heaven sooner. That's kind of the way that I look at it now, like it doesn't really faze me, nothing does. The only thing I'm fearful of is not doing what God tells me to do. I'll be back. The moon. I'm going to be posting a video that I did at night two nights ago, but it's on obedience. It's hard to hear, but hopefully you'll be able to hear it. I just talking about obedience, and before I walked into the store, I was trying to explain that I recorded a video while I was walking, and I was talking about these people that I interacted with. I had a blowout. One of my tires blew out, and I had to get a new one. And I met people that I witnessed to, and if my tire didn't blow out, I wouldn't have witnessed to them. And one of them was a woman that went through the same type of thing that I did with my breakup, and I was able to help her 
with that as well. And when I left the place, I ended up laughing, saying, like, that's why. Like, that's that's why God had that happen. It wasn't, what is this, why me? It's, that's why it happened, so I can help someone else. Because I've been through it and dealt with it. I'll be back. What I'm getting at was, the pain was worth it. And now it's going to be even more worth it when somebody does come in. Or he does align me with this person. And everything just flows and I'm going back to Florida next month to meet my parents there. We're going to hang out. And I think I'm going to try to meet someone there that I wanted to talk to, but I didn't because I didn't know them enough then. And I didn't have the strength then. But now I do. I'm not like worried about what's going to happen or even if they reject me because it's not about that. It's just about finding out, you know. If it's not it, it's not it. So be it. But I think it's it. I'm not going to lie. I really do. I'm, I'm not confident about it, but I know that God's in it. So regardless, it's going to be something. If it's not meant to be that, it's going to be something like a friendship or a connection that just stays for life. Discernment is so heightened that I don't... It's not that I don't trust people, but I can feel their intentions. I can sense who's for me, who's not for me. There are people that support me, and there are people that don't support me. And I know what that's like from everything I've already been through. So there are people from my past that know me for who I was then. And now suddenly I'm like posting Bible verses and all this stuff about being anointed and how to know if it's from God and things like that and they're just like yeah okay whatever John you know what I mean like that's probably how they're thinking because they've known me as this drug addict or not drug addict but addicted to weed and cigarettes and it's just not who I was you know so I wasn't for God even though I went to Catholic school and I've known a lot of them since I was eight and since I was making music and now I'm making music again and it's just it's just a lot and it's probably a lot for them too to take in like oh wow maybe he has changed but I don't even think about what they're thinking about I'm only thinking about what God thinks of me and I think that's what everybody should be doing is thinking about what God is doing for them I'm not what trying to be like an influencer like oh look at my life look at me look at this no look at what Jesus saved me from because it's true He's really transformed me and who I am. And I have a whole new love for the Bible again, like it's my first love. And going back to that church that I found that I was talking about, when I first got here, it was April. And then in June, I ended up helping them with their conference, working the parking lot. And I met people from different continents. I've been eating with people from different continents. And I'm not bragging, I'm just saying that's how good God is. And some of the people that I've met, they've blessed me with furniture for my apartment. Because I've told them, you know, like I just work and go home and work and go home and read and that's it. So they've blessed me and in turn I've been blessing them with words and talking and just, I guess our presence is a blessing to each other, you know. And there's people at the church when I first got there. You have to know people's intentions. Because when I first got there, they were vetting me. And at the conference, one of the guys, he goes, Oh, well, we have this men's group, and uh, we want you to be a part of it. And at first, I'm like, no, I kind of don't want to do that because I'm used to just being alone. You know, I'm used to doing my own thing or my own thing with God. And I wasn't comfortable with joining this group. And... I, I gave him my phone number anyways, and I'm glad that I did because I found my phone number. His My phone number was in his phone. As he typed it in, uh, he goes, oh, you must have been like, you must have reached out to me already. I'm like, I just met you right now, so no. So that just means like the church had my phone number somehow through something, you know, like, and he was in charge of finding me or something. But it could also be for bad. So what happened uh, two months ago, or I think it was last month, I can't even remember because time's been going by so quickly. The pastor, after 
of the conference, the lead pastor came up to me and he goes, oh, what do you think? And I said, well, I think it's the most Bible that I've ever gotten besides me at my house just reading and nerding out and looking at my notebook and studying. And I thought it was a very good thing for me. And the next sermon that he did, or that sermon that he did, was on reading. And the same guy that I said had my phone number in his phone, he came up to me and goes, hey, look, um, you kind of came in really strong when you got here. Do you need prayer? And I'm like, no. Honestly, he goes, well, I want to pray for you anyways. And then he started to twist my words, and he thought I said that I need my walls to come down when I didn't say that at all. And uh, he goes, well, I'm going to pray for you, and I hope that you get the help that you need and I'm like I don't need help I have God and I'm doing fine I think he thought maybe I was a new believer or something I don't know but he said in the men's group I came on too strong I knew too much and I was it was like I was a bible nerd and he goes oh well me and the guys were gonna get you kicked out we were trying to get you removed so I ended up removing myself uh, and I'm continuing to do what I said I was going to do, just work alone. And now they still have men that are a part of that group scoping me out and like uh, like being spies in a weird way. Like, oh, how's John doing or this or that without him directly coming to me. It's like using flying monkeys and all this. And it's like, dude, I'm well aware of what's going on. And I told you that I didn't want to be a part of it to begin with. And here you are, like, harassing me, bugging me, and now making me feel like I'm not welcome in the church that I was welcome to to begin with, you know? So now I'm starting to pull back, like I said, but I don't think it's a form of self-sabotage. I think I was there for that reason and there to show the lead pastor that, yeah, prophets can come. The prophets you've been praying for, they do exist, and I was one of them. But if your people are going to be rude to me and all that dust off the you know shake the dust off your feet like jesus said and keep walking go to another town that's kind of what i've been doing you know even when i was in florida i had great experiences there but same thing it's almost like people they get intimidated and they don't want you to be a part of their ministry because they've been building it up for so long and it's like a family thing that their children inherit the positions from default So it's almost like, okay, well, what are you going to do? Because my kids are already up next, you know? And instead of me, like, getting involved, it's like you get kicked out because you want to do something and you want to help and you want to be a part. But they don't see it as a good thing. They see it as, oh, you're going to replace, not reinforce, when in fact I'm going to reinforce and not replace. So there's many, many factors to it. That's why I feel like I'm called to this and by this it has multi-facets but I don't have my family following me I haven't told any of my friends from my past about this channel because I know what it's going to lead to and hopefully I'm able to upload this without cutting down the video too much because I know that I have to delete some content but if I have to delete content to create content I will but I'm not trying to be a content creator I'm just trying to be a Bible talker, speaker, whatever you want to call it, Bible teacher, you know, so expect more of that, expect more of who I am now and not who I was then, Um, good things are definitely coming and I want you to know that for yourself too, if you found this video without being a subscriber, thank you, but if you know people that are also dealing with what I've dealt with, share this with them. If there's people dealing with church hurt, share this with them. If there's people that you know that are called to ministry but they don't know where to start, send this to them. Because I'm just starting too. It's been five years, but I think I'm finally ready. What better time than now? Honestly, out of all the things that I've been through, everything that I've dealt with, it's leading me to here, to this moment now. So, again, thank you for listening to me. Thank you for hearing what I have to say. And there's many more things that God has done for me. And I can get into that later. He saved me from death numerous times. I've almost drowned to death. Someone put their foot on me when I was younger. And I ended up escaping that through the grace of God. Car accidents sitting in the back of station wagons with my parents. And I ended up getting saved from that. I was playing Game Boy, walking across the street, looking down at Pokemon. And my friend pushed me out of the way. So I was saved there too. It's just just many things that have happened jumped on a couch and I got a rusty thing through my foot and my foot's still fine like I've been through a lot and there's a reason 
ministry. It's God's ministry, but I'm, I'm a voice piece from all that I've been through. It's for God to give me victory through it all. So, yet again, thank you. I'll be home soon. And, yeah, I love you. I'll get home safe. Bye. I feel a change coming. More of you and less of me. Transformation. Transformation by spirit in me. That's what I was saying at the beginning of this video. Now this is freedom. Holy Spirit, make me more like Jesus. Every day a little more like Jesus. Crucify my flesh with yours. Let new life might be secure. Everything I do be done so I can honor you.